I will never get tired of the Zen 5 joke being alive and well. This is the 12 of the 16 core first look at Linux. It's a Zen 5 server. It's the world's first Zen 5 server. Okay, it's an AM5 server, but this does give us a preview. We saw the 6 and the 8 cores. We anticipate hotly how good it's going to be, especially for those Linux and Workstation and DevOps workloads. But it's actually more complicated than that. Is this Linux's time to shine? Is it outperforming Windows? Well, in a lot of cases, even for gaming workloads, Linux can now outperform Windows on Zen 5. Partly because I think Windows is doing some dumb stuff. Like some new dumb stuff. Let's dive in. Okay, Zen 5, you've been living under a rock. I always say that, and some people are, you know, I lived under a rock when I was a kid, it's fine. Anyway, Zen 5, new micro architecture, AVX 512, tremendous performance uplift. You can really tell that AMD engineers were taking a hard look at what was happening in the server space, and they really just went down the checklist of all the stuff to make the CPU go fast for servers. And so when there are servers based on this CPU, probably gonna be a breathtaking moment. We don't actually know, I mean, okay, we do a little bit, but this is only two memory channels and 16 cores. Like, it's it's not it's not shining at its maximum brightness here, even for server workloads. And to be sure, we're gonna get to the Pharonix benchmarks in just a minute. Let's talk subjectively about workstation experience. Is this the ultimate developer DevOps workstation experience? Well, for both the 9900X and the 9950X, basically yes. Now, is it a significant uplift over the 9950X or 7950X that it would be worth going to the 9950X? And the answer there is, I think, no. AMD has become a boring execution machine, and I mean that in the most endearing way possible. If you look at the landscape of anybody who makes semiconductors, and I'm not talking about their immediate competition in the x86 market, I'm talking about Samsung, I'm talking about SK Hynix, I'm talking about TSMC's, you know, other projects, companies that they're working with. No one has the execution track record of AMD in the Zen family. Over the last five years, everybody has experienced significant stumbles. Zen 5 for desktop class workloads is not as much of a performance uplift as we have seen from Zen 1 to Zen 2, from Zen 2 to Zen 3, from Zen 4 to Zen 5 is, mm, I think, it depends on the workload. If you've got an AVX 512 workload, some of the Linux workloads, yeah, you're, you're seeing 20% uplift. AMD's actually being a little bit conservative. But for rank and file interactive user workloads, it's not 5%. Okay, gamers are upset that maybe it's 5%, but this is the Linux review. We're not, we'll, we'll get there because that might not actually be correct either. It's more like mm, seven and a half, eight percent 8%. And with a developer workload, because of the insane awfulness of compiler design, there's a lot of fun stuff in Zen 5 that actually helps with those workloads. Before I get ahead of myself, let's talk quality of life improvements. DDR5 5600 fully supported in both two and four slot motherboards. If you're thinking this is at parity with Intel, you'd be wrong. It turns out AMD was ahead of Intel all along with the AM5 platform, with the only exception being motherboards that only have two memory slots. Yeah, I, you know, I feel like some of the oomph of this is lost because it takes so many words to explain, but LGA 1700, even on W680, workstation class motherboards, DDR5 5600 not officially supported on those workstation motherboards that have four DIMM slots. I mean, you might be able to get it to work, but you're not gonna be able to do a warranty claim if it's unstable or a little bit unstable in 24 seven workloads. Meanwhile, this platform, this is actually the ASRock B652 UG1. I did a separate review on this. You wanna run DDR5 5600 with two DIMMs, 96 gigabytes, 40, that, I've been testing that rock solid. It's amazing on AM5. 5200 was actually also higher. 4400 is what you could expect on an Intel platform with four DIMM slots in even the workstation configurations, even with DDR5 ECC memory. AMD definitely had some annoying issues when AM5 launched with full ECC validation. Strangely, some of the motherboards, like this one from ASRock, with uh, prior to like the 20.0 version of ECC, getting ECC enablement working all the way through to the operating system was a little bit of an uphill battle. Like, look, if AMD is gonna transition into technology leader, at least for these parts, uh, they can't have misses 
like that. And I hesitate to even call it a miss because people using it for these kind of, like the desktop x86 core is almost becoming a rounding error on literally everybody's books. AI and everything else is what's driving everything. So this is like being excited about the filing cabinet in the disused lavatory in the bottom floor that says beware the leopard on the door. I mean, I'm still excited about it. x86 cores and this is amazing. But people aren't spending money, the crazy amounts of money. Like, you need good x86 cores, but you need good x86 cores so that people buy all the other stuff. The x86 cores are not intrinsically a super insanely valuable product, and yet they do require a lot of care and feeding and love and engineering and everything that goes into them. And AMD has come with the love. There doesn't seem to be that much seething and unhappiness in this product. It's a, it, I don't know, it's, a, it's hard for me to explain. The 9950 will turbo up to 5.7 gigahertz, while the 9900X will turbo up to 5.6. The base clock is 4.3 and 4.4 respectively. So the 9900X does have a little higher base clock. TJ Maxx is 95 degrees C and AMD tells us that the expected operating temperature of these CPUs it normally is 70 to 90 degrees C. This is made for a gaming node that is really high performance. And so it has a liquid cooler from Dynatron. Dynatron? Dynatron. It's a nice thick triple 80 millimeter cooler to fit in a 2U configuration, but these CPUs are gonna work great in the data center with air cooling, especially the 12 and the uh, eight core variants because they use so little power. Both of these parts is support eco mode natively. That means AMD is doing testing and validation if you wanna step down the wattage in these configurations. And really, you know, stepping down the wattage doesn't dramatically affect the single core performance. It's really the multi-core that's affected. And you see that in the Windows review. So like if you wanna check out the Level 1 Text Windows review, even when you enable PBO, it doesn't help gaming all that much, mostly. It does a little bit, but mostly it doesn't. Now here's where things get interesting. <sighs> gaming benchmarks on Linux. Proton does actually give us some options for running gaming benchmarks on Linux. And some distros have some tuned kernels and tuned settings like Nobara. If you run a game on Nobara, on Linux, Nobara Linux with Proton, and you run a game on Windows, generally Linux is gonna be a little slower because the Linux ecosystem is different. But every day Linux gets to a little bit better performance parity. But there are some anomalous cases that I'm investigating that show that gaming on Linux on the 9000 series CPUs is like two or three percent better? Two or three percent on top of five percent gains from six percent, seven percent gains from the 7950X. This is enough to put the 9950X on the top of the gaming benchmark chart in Linux, but not Windows. We've seen some benchmarks where, oh, let's disable SMT. I don't think that it's SMT. It's always been the case that some games benefit from SMT being off. That's symmetric multi-threading, so extra, extra thread per core. Some games have always benefited from SMT being off. There's not a lot of new information there. In terms of like, does this game benefit between Zen 4 or Zen 5? That would be the comparison to do. It's like, okay, let's turn SMT off in both Zen 4 and Zen 5, two things, see how it goes. I'm not really seeing that, but I am seeing something interesting in the data in terms of performance between a game on Linux and a game on Windows. And I'm not ready to talk about that because I haven't had enough time with these parts to really figure that out. So you're just gonna have to stay tuned, get subscribed, whatever. Zen 5, the architecture, I can tell that AMD is paving, laying the groundwork, like paving the road, doing some stuff for some really incredible things in Zen 6. If you're already on Zen 4, it's not gonna make sense to upgrade. If you're on Zen 3, especially at like a, an X3D part and your interest is more in gaming and productivity, it may not make sense to upgrade. The DDR5 ECC 96 gigabyte two DIM configuration and 16 cores is enough for me to say that if I were in an AM4 position, I probably would make the jump to AM5 now because we're at a point where the boards are mature. There's new 800 series boards coming out with some new features that are probably not gonna matter for most people in the, in the Linux side of things. But this is a solid offering with a substantial performance uplift for productivity and for Linux. And for the first time, it looks like Linux and the kernel and all of the stuff in, in the Linux side of things, their ducks are more in a row and more organized and makes a more enjoyable processing experience than on the Windows side. Windows may catch up quickly with insider builds or maybe somebody will figure out what's going on with, with Windows, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's nice to see the experience on Linux as good as it is 
with a higher overall percentage uplift. Like if you were talking like a geo mean performance, Linux has enjoyed quite a bit more geo mean performance uplift than, than Windows. Go team! All right, I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums. If you want to discuss or you think I got something wrong or you, we want to run some experiments, I uh, I was not expecting to find some of the stuff that I found. And there's, there's some treasures here. There's something going on. All right, let's figure this out. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums.